Hi, Shay Given here. You're watching Irish Football Fan TV. Hello, uh, welcome back to Irish Football Fan TV. We're all smiles here, even though we really shouldn't be. Ireland uh, losing 5 1 to Denmark. This is our final whistle reaction. We've got Terry Ward and his daughter Abby, who was mascot for the game against Denmark the other night. First of all, we'll just get, I want to ask you just about um, being a mascot. How was it? Yeah, and uh, what were the players like? They were really nice. I thought um, Arthur was really nice with them, so was Brady. Yeah, they were nice. And Terry, did you get to go into the, to the dressing room with that? No, I actually got into the dressing room before she went out. So when we went into the dressing room, we only met the FEI staff and they gave out, they picked the players, or the, the mascots for which team they wanted to go with. And if you were going with the Irish team, you were the Denmark gear. If you were going with the Denmark team, you were the Irish gear. So, and then when you had all that sorted out, the parents all had to go back to their seats and wait for the our kids to come back then when they... Okay, and um, what, what, what did they say to you when, when you had to wear the... Uh... We, we got, we, when my dad left, we were all still in the change room for a few minutes and then Jonathan Rogers came into us and he was kind of talking to us and asking us about the game and what do you think it, the score will be and stuff. I said to you now and then some other fella said four now to Denmark. So was he Danish? No. He was Irish? He was Irish. What did John Walters say to him? He just laughed at him. Because <laughs> uh, Johnny Walters, he was tweeting us during the week as well, yeah. His actually son was Moscow. Oh, was he? Yeah, yeah, son was Moscow. Was he wasn't the one who said Fornia, was he? <laughs> <laughs> and then he asked us if he wanted us to send in a message because he was going into the change room, so we always say good luck. Yeah, oh, fair him. play. And uh, so I believe you had a, a bit of a, a choice to make. This is a big choice now. What was it? I could either wear the Ireland gear and go with Christian Eriksen or wear the Denmark, Denmark gear and walk out with the Ireland team. Well, and what did you choose? Pick the Denmark gear and walk out with the Irish team. And who did you get to go out with? I uh, went out with Harry Arthur. Okay. And you were saying then um, Harry Arthur was very nice to you, was he? Yeah, he was. And before uh, in the tunnel there was a bit of an altercation, was there? Yeah, they were all like shouting come on lads and they were like saying all the stuff and then all of them were like talking to each other and then the Danish, like yeah, Denmark, started talking about Danish and everything and saying come on now. Trying to psych each other out? Yeah, and then that was it and then they just stopped, they just stopped, it was just silence. I mean, you were on the pitch then for the national anthem, that way. Yeah. How was that? Because I, I think that was the loudest I've ever heard. Yeah, it was so good, I think. I was so loud as well. Brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> then you met the president, there's Johnny Higgins. <laughs> were you taller than him? Uh, yeah, you just said hi, you just said hi. Were you taller than him? <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, well, um, fair play to you. And that was brilliant that you got to do that. Shame about the result, but we, I suppose we'll get into it. Um, start off with, like, what a great start. Oh, you couldn't ask for a better start. But at the same time, I think it was a great start. They were saying to say, when I was going to the match, I said, Hope you don't get a quick goal because I didn't want us to sit back. Yeah, too early. And that's exactly what we done. Like the Danish came out, I think the get Danish when the f the whistle went, the Danish came out flying. And even before we scored a goal, I thought they had us pinned right back. And then we got a goal on the break. You know, great goal. Like, I mean, I know it's a free kick, but great header. Smiley came out, he hesitated. Still, the same thing is, is with Duffy is that he gets himself in those positions. Yeah. It's the same thing against George. It was a similar type of goal. He's just that much taller than the keeper. Yeah, that, even the keeper with the hands can't, the hands get up, can't even get near him. But the same time, great finish. And then uh, even, was it about six, seven minutes later, we could have had a second goal. Training yeah, but well, that's what I was going to say. It's like people, a lot of people complain that we don't play all this nice football. But it was a, that was a, that was probably the best, one of the best yeah. moves of the game. Totally it was uh, it came, all came kind of from the left. Yeah, and then it came, it came over. But McLean cut inside and inside the 18 yard box, and it, we, we were actually just sitting right, right across me, and you could see as soon as he pulled the trigger, it was going in. But he didn't hear that on the outside of his boot. We kind of bend it out wide, like I mean. Yeah, he likes to score from that position as well. Ah, off the Austrian yeah, team, and it, it, it's his kind of position, isn't it? To score yeah, and I think it's just. So I'm looking at it. I know we lost the game, but I think if we had scored that second goal, I think it would have been a totally different game because I think the heads for Denmark would have went down because they need, we needed three to score. And even at that stage, if we had a second goal. would have needed two. Two, the, oh, two goals, sorry. Yeah, because it, well, it would have equaled yeah, three. Yeah. But the way goal, but uh, I think then if we had a, not sat back, but we would have defended probably a lot better with a two goal cushion, but it just wasn't the way down in the evening. Yeah, well, I suppose we get into the. the 
Dane is gold and um, when we did left how you had the two on one yeah. on the short corner. What are you laughing at? <laughs> and they left Harry Ard with Sisto and Ericsson who are yeah. they're two most creative players. And but when you see two, even in junior football, kids football, you see two going in for a corner, they automatically send up two. If there's always one going there, you send it another one, as soon as they take it even. But I don't know why they didn't do it. It was, I think, shocking. Shocking, especially in professional football. Yeah. You should send up two straight away. So maybe they, sh- they switched off for that split second, but it cost them in the end. Yeah, but definitely. And I mean, people are giving Harry a stick about getting, you know, made or whatever, but like, is there a Meg or Ericsson's going to get the ball whipped in? At least he, he actually went down to close it down. But yeah. Do you know what I mean? He tried to prevent the cross. He's the only one that reacted because no one has reacted. So That's it. Yeah, yeah, that's that's for that. And then the ball gets uh, crossed in and then he just, uh, Christensen just sticks a leg out at it. Oh, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Well, yeah. At first, when I seen it, I thought, I never even thought I was going to win the goal. But it was only when I went home that evening and watched it then on, on the replay. I seen it on, on the TV, the, the goal. And it's just it's just caught in between his feet. I, I think it I once it maybe a split second he might have thought it was going wide because by the time he hit the post and came he couldn't he couldn't get his feet adjusted. Yeah. And it just it looked com- comical, you know what I mean? It was just I I, I, I have to say Chris, he's a foul there. I yeah, mean how can you not have you, 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 your job on the line is to make sure that if anything comes in that you have to clear it. So you should be on your toes yeah, ready. Straight away his position was wrong for the defender standing on, on the line. He was at an angle and he was kind of letting the ball go by and then i said he was kind of off the line then and then he, 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 got, he messed up. He almost left it. It probably wouldn't have went in. I don't think it would have went in. I think he would have came back out. I really did. Yeah, well, this just seems to be a com- comedy of errors and then, of course... Stephen Hunt or Stephen Ward, sorry, I must call him Stephen Hunt. I was with Stephen Hunt last week. He didn't have the base games now. Uh, Stephen Ward. At the same time, I kind of feel bad for him yeah. because ultimately now his his uh, international career has been diminished yeah, over totally. one game. Yeah, okay, totally. Unfortunately, that's that's happened in football. You have the one bad game that the mistakes stand out so bad that it does kind of that's your career. You know what I mean, you'll be remembered for that. I think like Steve Thornton, he's been remembered for the bad times at, at the manager yeah. at the moment. He's not and he's never had a job since. He's not since. for the, the great things he's done for his country at club. Exactly. You know, what I was going to say was, with Ward, he gets the ball. And they were trying, Ireland were trying to play football at this, at this stage. And this is the thing with, with our fans is that half of them, they, to be happy to see us like play this sort of brand of football. But when it goes wrong, it's like, why didn't he hit for it? And yeah. then... There's the other lot that goes, ah, oh, well, if you do feel fit, I'd give him a way of playing ball. So he, like, as a player, you can, can only imagine, like, what he's thinking. And the way they break for for the goal, it's three passes in a goal. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? A lot of people are going, we can't give him that amount of space. But it was it was, it was a brilliant well, counter attack goal. Great counter attack. It was a one touch finish at the edge of the box lane. The pick out top corner like that was just. You know, amazing the no keeper's going to say. No, no keeper's going to say. Well, I thought when Mord had the ball, I think he. He got a ball back from Brady, wasn't it? Yes. A pass back from Brady. It wasn't the best of passes back, back to him. Yeah. And by the time he took the touch and controlled it and had a look up the line, it was too late. And then he tried to pass, it got blocked, and they just broke. Well, as you said, they just even... won two, and that was the game of balls in the back of the net. But you didn't even have time to, t- 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 to get back to no, try to recover. No, no, as no. well as that, do you know what I mean? And everyone was like, oh, where, where were the midfielders breaking? They were all bombing on the ball. They were all bombing on the ball, for the ball to go forward. And that was it. And Look, the way I see it is, is, is that once we went 1 0 up, we should have reverted back to the way we played in Denmark. Yeah, totally. Weird. And just, you know, add up everything like we did. And don't give them the time to ball to play and hustle and hustle and hustle. But well, that was it. And we just, we just kept letting them do what they want and we were letting them have the ball. Like, we, like, like with Wales, like we let Wales, we let well, Wales play. especially when we scored, we let them have the ball. And then we didn't mind them having the long shots or trying to have the long shots because we knew we could cut because they were that far out, they weren't going to cause any damage. Unless it's going to be something like uh, Nairs and Finns, like the one yeah, off. Yeah, exactly. And then when we get into um, half time, and uh, like, uh, like we turn to panic stations, yeah. then you know. I thought, personally, we said, I thought the second half they're going to go, you know, nothing to lose, they're going to go for it. And then we see the two changes, McGee and Wes Hillen. I was delighted with Wes Hillen, come on, but I didn't think McGee had much to offer. Subs, Abby, what did you think of the subs? McGee and Hula coming off, and our two defensive midfielders coming off. How did you? What did you think about it? You're the mascot. You're the superstar. Tell me. I wasn't too sure. I, to be honest, I thought he put uh, Shane Long on because McLean was just running and they were doing well, but I thought he put Shane Long on, Shane Long on instead of McGee. 
Yeah, I think that was everybody's thinking. Yeah. I don't think anybody was was was, was expecting to see McGee, a winger, coming out. And he's that's the only thing I'll say about with O'Neill is, is sometimes his tactics are so clueless. Like why? Like he, he was playing at one point. Was it was against Serbia, or in one of those games he had, or maybe I think it was Serbia, and he had like. McGeady in midfield and he had McLean in midfield and he plays Brady in midfield. Yeah, so. I just think I think with the as I was saying, the changes he made at the game that I'm sure choosing me, I wasn't I totally was I was totally surprised I see McGeady come on. And as you said he took off the two defensive mid midfielders, so he wanted to and West Hill and obviously he wanted West Hill and more on the ball, pick up the pockets. But I don't think anyone game, was disappointed to see West. No, I think I think everyone wanted to see West start. Pearson would have liked him. Pearson would have liked him. I'm glad he came on, but would have liked him to see Shane Shane Long start the game. But Definitely. You know, we had said that in the previous. Yeah. That he he made for Murphy. Yeah. Ran his socks off. He walked. He was a typical gave his heart for 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 the cause. He walked his socks off for the whole game. Kill me. He really did. But when I seen McGeady come on, I was I was shocked and then first I was shocked. Like for such a big game, to try and come out, you're two one down. You want to get something from from the game, and. I don't think McGeady offered it anything in the game at all. I think that might be the last k- game he's kicked for a while. I don't think so. I think, he, I think he done more da- damage than good. Yeah. Than well, we we'll talk about him anyway, because like, you were not too happy with him, obviously, with the third goal. No, no. I think uh, when the third goal, we actually, we actually were on attack, and Smigel came out and caught the ball. And as a fan, even, I play, I play football myself in junior level, um, but... Uh, I could see it. I could actually see Smigel looking right across in the right wing, like, and McGeady was looking at him, and that's when he just launched the ball out of his head. McGeady still looking at him, he's just ball watching all the way, and the Danish player took the ball down. McGeady was nowhere near him, he was, well, I'd say, about 10, 10 yards off him at least. The ball got switched across the park with one pass, and he broke and scored the toe goal. And that's officially the game over. Yeah, and I think that was, that was when the uh, were work very uh, much broken at that point. It was horrible, it was absolutely, you could just. You could even see the players' reaction. The 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 life was drained. You could see yeah. that their heads were dropped. The life of They knew themselves. They got, as you were saying earlier, the, some of the players. It's the last time they'll ever get to reach to a World Cup final, and they knew that was their last chance, and it was gone. It was just gone. We won't go. Yeah, like I don't know what O'Neill was thinking. Like how? Like everybody knows how good Ericsson is. Like yeah. that's like that doesn't take a genius. Like you were saying, you know, for the first game, do I'm not making them. And he, he didn't he didn't do anything in the first game. But he had flashes. I think in the second game, third of the night, he was let, like as you, you said, he took off two two defensive midfielders from McGeady, who I think didn't offer anything in the game. Mm, but he put Brady and Hendrick as the defensive midfielders then. Yeah, but there were two of them. Still from the middle of the park, I think ran them up. Sistos. Sist up, sorry, you, you ran them up in the middle of the park, he did. I think. He was he was out wide. Uh, uh, was it was it uh, Delaney? No, no, it was it was, it was, it was, it was it everywhere. He was everywhere. He was like he was like McLean for Freud. He was all over the back. Like, I mean, he, yeah, he was brilliant for him. Yeah, he's quality. And then there's the the fourth goal, and I don't know what Stephen was thinking. Yeah. I think I think when that happened with the the goal in the first half, you could see throughout the game he was trying harder and harder to to make up for what he yeah. was mistake done. And sometimes you know you yeah. so you play football. Sometimes the harder you try the most it gets and unfortunately it was just such an easy ball to deal with and his touch, touch just whatever way he did and then he falls back if it, yeah. and then with the two previous goals you can't give Ericsson that no. oh my god no, no. and he just punished you like the, the goal his second goal he just curves his, his bad foot into the top yeah, corner do you know what I mean give him that amount of time on the ball he's yeah. got to punish you and it's three times and then um, the fifth goal, which uh, actually we were talking about off air, I thought that was um, that shouldn't have been a goal. That shouldn't have stat- a stood no, because he, he, he McLean takes him from behind. I yeah, get that. Yeah. But then they get to take the shot. They, they miss their shot. That's their advantage. That's their advantage. Like the referee played on. He had his hands. He played on for advantage to play on. I wouldn't mind if he didn't get a shot off. Fair enough. But he, he, he got shot. He has a touch. An open goal. It was actually a bad miss. And then he brings it back and gives him the penalty. Yeah, uh, I thought I thought the ref had a shocker. Yeah, in, in, in all honesty. What did you think about the penalty decision, Abby? I wasn't happy. I don't know, because I was just upset. I can't remember. Yeah, <laughs> I thought well, I was I was close to tears myself. So at least you stayed till the end with like half the hands, but okay. 
Yeah, that's true. Yeah, there's an awful lot of fans. About eighty odd minutes, eighty to eighty three minutes. There, you could see the stadium was. The third goal for me is when a lot of people around me left. Left. Yeah. Well, where we were, I think there was an awful lot of Danish fans beside us, and there was a few in sitting around us. And they were delighted when we were just sitting there, just needing to yeah. like, you know, So she was on the other foot, I suppose. And that's it. Yeah. Um. Well, look, that's obviously the scoreline, but. but would you be happy to keep on the alarm? Personally, I would. Personally, I, I would be happy to keep him on because, I said, he got us so far in the campaign. I think, it's, I don't mean to be bad about it, it's all in, like, we have, we're known for the war, for great fans, giving it all, that they're, they're on the pitch, fighting for the jersey, the, the press in the jersey, which I've always said, they've always done. On Steel Tuesday night, I think the tactics were wrong, I just think it wasn't meant to be, because, Denmark came out at the end, they were the better team of the night. I thought we were poor overall like, as, as a team, but I still think Brian O'Neill has done a great job. That's my own personal opinion. I do too, but I think he's, he's he is his own biggest problem, in a sense, is that his, his tactics at times, when there's times where he just doesn't need to do it, I don't think that we had to panic at 2-1 yeah. the other night. I think we could have nicked the goal, it's and after the last 15, 20, then pushed on, um, and had the like well he probably would have started with Long but you know what yeah. I mean um, had the likes of Hula and stuff like that come well, on around this, this you, you, you would have started with Long and I personally I thought the same when Long was going to start and what, I think he came on with 25 minutes ago when he, the game was over and he almost scored yeah he almost scored he was on he was so unlucky not to score he was great ball, ball, ball through great flick but I still think the game was over when he came on yeah and, and even at the end of the game I actually seen him come over to the radio he was going over to his man and uh, you could see the frustration, he was he was really annoyed to come in, and I don't blame him, because yeah, that he, was his big chance to get to the World Cup. And he's catching on a bit now, so I don't think, but he might be in the squad for the next for the, campaign, yeah, but the, 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 uh, the way he's gone in terms of goal scoring, like, he might start pumping down the leagues. Now yeah, he, unfortunately he hasn't been, but the probably put that down to, he's not getting the game time either. But he's been getting the game time at Southampton. Yeah, yeah, he has, yeah, true, he has, yeah. So well, I don't know why he doesn't give him a chance with the Irish team. He's just not scoring for Ireland, and he, he hasn't. And he was rightfully dropped from here. I know. We did say that, you know, when Murphy came in um, against Moldova, he was scoring and yeah. stuff like that. So you could see O'Neill's sense in that. But what, what I'm, what I'm, I just think on, on the night the, on the night itself, he got the tactics totally, totally wrong. As you said, at 2-1 two, two down, he didn't need the, pan, the panic. He, we, as you said, we could have nicked, nicked the goal and pushed on from then. But... Absolutely. Now, the only like, the thing I, I don't like is that we're all all oh, O'Neill's brilliant when he when when um, things are going well, yeah. and then when things are going bad, he's the worst manager in the world. But I think any manager who gets us to a tournament should should, should be celebrated because yeah. not that many have got us to tournaments. No. So O'Neill got us to the Euros. Same yeah. as Trapattoni. Yeah. Mick McCarthy got us to the World Cup. Jack Charlton and so on. Um, but there hasn't been that many that have gotten us to that. So I think he should, even if he does go, I think he should be celebrated. Well, I think he does go. Like, I don't we've know had some good nights on the road, yeah. We've, we've had, um, unfortunately, I said it was just the one at the weekend, Saturday, a nil nil. We had to take an ass with one nil nil as well. Would have liked to get an away goal. I think that would have been brilliant. But would have taken the nil nil. I was happy with the nil nil as well. Away. Yeah. At home, I think he got totally wrong. We started off great, which I thought we scored, which was brilliant. But at the same time, I was nervous at that because. Yeah, but as the game went on, obviously you got it was it just wasn't it today. Yeah. Obviously. Abby, would you like to see Marilyn Neal stay on? Yeah, I would want to stay on because he's done well for what we got into the World Cup and the Euros. Yeah, that's it. And like, if you think about it, who who can we get in to replace him? I mean, there's Chris Hewton who would be an argument, but what's yeah. he going to do differently? He plays as like he, I know he's got a couple of skillful players at Brighton, but a lot of the time they're playing hoof ball too. Hoof so. ball too, yeah. So he's not going to change the way. We're always going to get the mixed reaction with the fans. As, as you said earlier when we were talking about we're happy, we're not happy when we're not playing the long ball, or we're giving them when we're playing the long ball. But when we try to play the short ball, the nice ball, and it doesn't work out, we haven't got the players. We're giving out, we're giving out about that. So you're always going to have the 50-50 split. But I just think it is what it is. Yeah, definitely. Um. So I think we're, we're kind of all thumbs up for O'Neill to stay. Yeah, like, um, yeah. I think I think the press just love uh, an enemy. Oh, totally. Yeah. Any sort of, uh, you know, they, they were 
criticising O'Neill when we lost to, to Serbia, basically trying to get him to say that he, he, he was going to finish up yeah. and stuff like that. And then he came out the other night. I think, I think he, he did that wisely, saying that he's going to take some time, come back, Oh, definitely, and then definitely. and then and then have a chat because we don't it's the best thing to do because yeah, everyone will forget because the Premier League exactly. will be there. And well, then you don't want to say things straight away after a match after a big defeat like that. You don't want to say things that you might regret because it's the heat at the moment. Like you, you have, I'm sure he has 101 emotions going around his head, and the last thing you want to do is have a camera in your face with a microphone and someone saying, "Are you going to stay on? What do you think your career the forward is now?" That's the last thing you want. So I think you don't. Yeah, look, if O'Neill is to stay, I think. He needs to start bringing in these youngsters that are coming through, the likes of Sean McGuire, and um, the likes of Conor Hoover. I know he's not that young, but he's he's really starting to do well at Villa. Yeah. yeah I mean, if he's not scoring, he's assisting every week in the championship. I know it's the championship, but I think Villa will be. I think he he might he might even get snapped up by a team that goes, gets promoted. If Villa don't get up and say playoffs or something like that, then you've got Declan Rice at West Ham who's put in some really good performances this year as well. So we do have players there. It was your man, Conor Ro- uh, Ronan, that um, Kevin De Bruyne was swapping shirts with a Wolves there. Yeah. He's another young fella coming through. Then you got Rob Elliott. He's not a young fella, but he's a very good keeper when he's fit. Yeah, but as you we were talking there a few minutes ago, you were saying off air, as you, there's a defenders now to come, to come up before the campaign that, but as you said, he has to give them the opportunity. And there's no point giving them an opportunity in friendlies and then forgetting about them. And then if players are to be retiring now soon enough... Well, there's, def- there's definitely going to be five or six, yeah. I'd say, I've played the last game. Yeah. And if not, like O'Shea will be gone. Oh, yeah. 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 O'Shea, probably Whelan. And Wes. Wes. Um, Johnny Walter is getting a bit on a bit now. So well, see, if a few of them might stay around for the Euros, they might say. Maybe. Well, I think Walters is, is pushing 34, 35 now. Yeah. Um, as good as he has been for us. And, you know, if you can keep it up, yeah, uh, well, ideally yeah, he's done something yeah, wrong. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Again, as well as that, we were, we still have Coleman to come back as well. People also forget that, and I always say, we were without two of our better but players. He, but even Coleman wasn't there. In fairness, he was a great ambassador for for the team. He was there even at the end of the match. He was out with the lads on the pitch. He was out with the lads on the pitch before the game. It was real pure professional tap and draw. He was doing, and he came over to every game. Yeah, and trained with them and everything like yeah, that. That was brilliant to see as well. Yeah, well look, uh, I, I, I just think that it's 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 um it's time to start bringing in some new players. Uh, mm-hmm. The likes of Hogan and that like that he's been picking, they need to start getting a run. Well, like I said, the friendlies are for that. So hopefully they get a run, they they prove a point in, in the friendlies and go on from there because they do need some fresh blood. Back Absolutely. The squad. Abby, are you excited to see any any players like Sean McGuire right, coming through? But he's been banging the in for Preston and he's been making assists and he looked yeah. like in um, even Clinton Morrison was, was actually really excited oh, about him the other night talking about him, yeah. Clinton uh, he was saying he was yeah, really excited about this kid, um, McGuire. Yeah, we've we'll been watching him. Personally with the few games the games we go to uh, for the league and for the other games, there was never any the young players going up that we we're talking about that she's seen, but the players that we have seen, like mean, she loves the likes of McLean, she loves Shea Shane on, we've landed off and goal, like they're all the players that she's always been watching, like, you know I mean? we're pacing with me because I bring them on to, to the games yeah. and she loves the likes of them players, so hopefully now, as you said, that they do get, get the opportunity and they do. Absolutely, so, I think uh, Hurling could be a smashing player for yeah. us, you know, what we've been lacking for a long time. I do think we have a very good midfield in there, even still, but I think Hendrick, Arthur, you put Hurlin in there as well. And there's, there's Liam Kelly at Reading as yeah. well as that. So there's, there's, there is players there that can come in. And, you know, our defence isn't bad either. Like, our centre-backs aren't bad either. I'd like to see... I wouldn't like to see Kieran Clark there long-term. No. Um, I don't know why... Um, another thing, this captaincy thing needs, oh, needs, it needs to be sorted. It needs to be... You have a captain. Yeah. You don't just give it to the next person that... No, I, I didn't. I but you want to get this confidence up. Ca- yeah, I, I don't agree with that now. I know Coleman's the captain, but even then when... And then Walters. Yeah, then when Walter then went off then, he was giving the band to, to Randolph, and Randolph didn't want it, and then Duffy had it, and he didn't want to know who to give it to. And it, it looks skillful, it looks stupid. So you, I said, you have your club captain, or the, or the, your country captain, which is... Shit, and the voice captain. Coleman, and the voice captain. And then you have obviously a man in charge like a player who, who if they're not there you can take 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 charge the team should have got I totally agree with you like he, he's the best man of the job like, 
He's yeah. the only one who leads by example. Yeah. Yeah. You know, when he's out there. Yeah, um, I suppose let us know your thoughts in the comments. Um, not really too much to, to say. Like uh, we're, we're trying to be optimistic here and, and, and hope and pray that we might get to the Euros and see how the qualifying round goes. Or is it the UEFA Nations League now? Uh, <laughs> so uh, we'll, we'll still be doing like, a couple more videos uh, with Steve and Phil when, uh, when they're back at the weekend. But um, thanks very much for coming on, Terry. No, no, Abby, yeah. fair play to you for coming on. Um, if you guys uh, would like to come in on the couch and discuss anything ever, um, do get in touch like Terry did. And uh, yeah, we're nice and inviting. You get a cup of tea. And, <laughs> yeah. cup of tea. Don't forget to subscribe as well. We're for that 1,000 subscribers for Christmas. If uh, Terry, you don't mind just pointing upwards there, that's where the little bubble's going to be. And uh, yeah, so just uh, hit the little bubble, press subscribe, and uh, tell your friends. Uh, once we get to 1,000 subscribers, we will. Uh, have some competitions and that. Uh, thanks very much for watching Irish Football Fan TV. Have a great day.